वेलकम टू ऑल आई एम डॉक्टर एम आर कदम असिस्टंट प्रोफेसर एट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री बाहब देसाई कॉलेज पाटन नाउ वी लर्न द थेरी ऑफ ग्रायोमेट्रिक एनालिसिस पार्ट टू सो इन दिस फर्स्ट वे इन द पार्टिकल साइज ऑफ द प्रेसिपिटेट इन दिस द रिलेशन बिट्वीन डिग्री ऑफ सुपर सैचुरेशन एंड द रिजल्टिंग पार्टिकल साइज ऑफ द प्रेसिपिटेट वॉज इन्वेस्टिगेटेड बाय द साइंटिस्ट विमर अकॉर्डिंग टू विमर इनिशियल रेट और फेलॉसिटी ऑफ द प्रेसिपिटेशन इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू द क्यू माइनस यस डिवाइडेड बाय यस दैट इज इनिशियल रेट और वेलॉसिटी ऑफ प्रेसिपिटेशन इज इक्वल टू के इन टू क्यू माइनस यस डिवाइडेड बाय यस वेयर के इज अ प्रोपोर्शनैलिटी कॉन्स्टंट विच डिपेंड्स अपॉन द टेम्परेचर विस्कॉसिटी एंड केमिकल नेचर ऑफ द प्रेसिपिटेट क्यू इज द टोटल कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द सब्सटन्स प्रेसिपिटेटेड दैट इज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ सुपर सैचुरेटेड सोल्यूशन एंड यस इज द इक्विलिब्रियम सोल्यूबिलिटी ऑफ द प्रेसिपिटेट विच इज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द सैचुरेटेड सोल्यूशन एंड द क्यू माइनस यस इज द डिग्री ऑफ सुपर सैचुरेशन एट विच द मोमेंट प्रेसिपिटेशन टेक्स प्लेस एंड ह्यूमन पॉइंटेड आउट दैट दैट इज हायर द इनिशियल वेलॉसिटी ऑफ द प्रेसिपिटेशन दैट इज क्यू माइनस यस डिवाइडेड बाय यस और हायर द डिग्री ऑफ सुपर सैचुरेशन दैट इज क्यू माइनस यस ग्रेटर इज द नंबर ऑफ न्यूक्लिय फॉर्मड इनिशियली एंड smaller is the particle size of the resulting precipitate and another that is when the smaller the initial velocity or larger the initial solubility of the precipitate then less the number of nuclei formed initially and larger is the particle size of the resulting precipitate particle size of the precipitate increases as the initial velocity of the precipitation decreases or initial solubility of the precipitate increases or the concentration of the reactants decreases or the temperature of the solution increases to get well defined crystalline precipitates we must keep q minus s divided by s low as possible and keep s high as possible and third keep q minus s low as possible as therefore large particles can be obtained by slow mixing of the hot and dilute solutions with careful stirring now we see the physical nature of the precipitate so in gravimetry solubility of the precipitate has much important along with purity filtration and washing and all these processes depends upon the size shape and the electrical charge present on the surface of the particle of the precipitate and based on the size shape and electric charge present on the surface these precipitates are divided in three types that is first crystalline precipitates second curdy precipitates and third gelatinous or amorphous precipitates the crystalline precipitates have the largest particle size and that is it lies between 10 raised to minus 4 to 10 raised to minus 3 cm and these crystalline precipitates are relatively pure and easy to filter and the crystal structure of these crystalline precipitates is quite visible to the eyes and example of these crystalline precipitates are barium sulfate calcium oxalate lead sulfate etc 
then second type of the precipitates is the curdy precipitates this curdy precipitates have smaller size than the crystalline precipitates that is it is lies between 10 raised to minus 7 to 10 raised to minus 4 centimeters and this size of the precipitate is not suitable in gravimetric analysis because these particles can pass easily through the ordinary filtering media but these precipitates can be coagulated to form larger secondary particles called flocks or curds which are of filtrable size during the precipitation process some conditions must be maintained so as to get larger particles of the precipitate and in the precipitation process may be one step included that is digestion and the crystal structure of this curdy precipitates can be visualized only by the x-ray methods and example of these precipitates are silver chloride silver bromide and lead chloride then third type of the precipitates is the gelatinous or amorphous precipitates these precipitates have smaller size than the curdy precipitates that is it ranges from 10 raised to minus 8 to 10 raised to minus 7 centimeter and these precipitates can easily pass through the ordinary filtering media these precipitates carries large amount of adsorbed water hence called the precipitates of hydrous oxides these precipitates have extraordinary tendencies to adsorb hydroxides of heavy metals like Zn2+, Cadmium2+, Mn2+, etc. The crystal structure of these precipitates is not visualized even by the X-ray method. An example of these precipitates is the aluminum hydroxide and ferric hydroxide mechanism or the process of the precipitation includes five steps or five stages that is first stage is the supersaturation second saturation and third nucleation fourth crystal growth and fifth eg so supersaturation and saturation already we have seen in the terms which are useful for the gravimetric analysis now we see the nucleation stage in detail so that is in the precipitation process initial transformation of the solution from supersaturated to the saturated stage is called as a nucleation this is one definition and another that is it is in the process in which some minimum number of ions or the molecules of the precipitate unites to form nuclei which may serve the centers or solid phase the nucleation process is also a two types that is spontaneous or homogeneous nucleation and another induced or heterogeneous nucleation first we have seen the spontaneous or homogeneous nucleation when the relatively high degree of supersaturation exists in the process of precipitation then nucleation from this process is expected to be taken in the spontaneous fashion hence it is called as a spontaneous nucleation and the clustering of ions of the precipitate to originate nuclei occurs spontaneously and it is homogeneous type as it consists only single phase particles in the precipitate second type that is induced or heterogeneous nucleation so this nucleation takes place when relatively low degree of supersaturation exists in these cases the nucleation 
has to be induced by introduction of a small crystal of the solute or the small particle of the same compound of the precipitate is introduced into the solution which serves as a site or center for the further precipitation. In some cases, fine suspended foreign matter or foreign impurities present in the solution may serve as the center for the nuclei or impurities which are adhered to the walls of the glass vessel and even scratches which are present on the glass surface may serve as the centers for the nucleation process of the supersaturated solution also helps to induce this nucleation. In all these circumstances, the nucleation process is said to be induced nucleation and it is of heterogeneous type because it consists more than one phases that means that is the added substance or the impurity that have different structure than the precipitate originate from the solution hence it is also called as a heterogeneous nucleation at the end it is concluded that larger the extent of supersaturation smaller is the size of the individual particle which is formed at the end of the precipitation process and vice versa now we seen the crystal growth once the nuclei or nucleus is formed it is continuously grows by the continued deposition of the particles of the precipitate till the average size of the particles of the precipitate is reached and along with this side by side the component ions of the precipitate are also get deposited at the specified sites to give uniform geometrical pattern to the building crystal or forming crystal the rate of crystal growth is determined by the degree of supersaturation in general greater the supersaturation much faster is the crystal growth the growing crystal is the two stage process first stage that is the diffusion of ions or the molecules of the precipitate to the surface of the growing crystal and second the actual deposition or the incorporation of ions or the molecules of the precipitate on the surface of the crystal. The rate of crystal growth depends upon the slower step of this. The diffusion rate is affected by concentration, temperature, stirring and the actual properties of the ions or the molecules of the precipitate which are involved in the crystal growth. Deposition rate affected by the concentration of the solution, surface properties of the resulting particle and the type of the geometrical arrangement that is geometrical shape of the resulting particle of the precipitate. If diffusion controls the crystal growth then ions or the molecules of the precipitate have certain mobility on the surface of the precipitate and the resulting particle of the precipitate becomes more rounded, perfect, dense and large sized. If the deposition, if the crystal growth is controlled by the deposition, then growth takes place at the edges, faces, corners of the growing particle of the precipitate and hence the particle of the resulting precipitate becomes with irregular not good or well for the gravimetric analysis. In gravimetric analysis after complete precipitation one step 
may included that is digestion or aging it is defined as it is the process of heating the precipitate in contact with the mother liquor at elevated temperature without stirring for some time after its complete formation this digestion gives product with improved crystal lattice purity particle size and filtrability during the digestion the adjacent particles of the precipitate becomes adjoined or bridged to each other this adjoining or bridging of the particles yields larger and perfect aggregates that are easy for filtration another process that is during the digestion fine particles of the precipitate get dissolved in the solution and again redeposit on the larger particles of the precipitate due to this recrystallization process many pockets of the imperfections in the precipitate are exposed to the solution and due to this many contaminations are removed and perfect crystals of the precipitate are formed hence it is also called as a ostols ripening due to these two above processes surface area of the solid particles of the precipitate is reduced again precipitate particles becomes more rounded and perfect with larger size and due to these two effects surface adsorption decreases in case of crystalline precipitate freshly precipitated barium sulfate and lead sulfate are feathery in nature on digestion they becomes more perfect and compact the curdy and gelatinous precipitates are less affected by the digestion in case of these precipitates weakly bounded water molecules get lost from the precipitate and denser mass is obtained which is easy to filter an example of these precipitates are agcl and fuh thrice one precaution should be taken in case of this digestion digestion should be avoided for those precipitates which are susceptible or sensitive to post precipitation thank you